unfortunately there were some technical difficulties which meant that these first few minutes there's no recorded sound. So I will try my best to give a rough idea of what I'm trying to say um, so you don't miss any key points. Um, right, so my talk is named Games and Ramsey Like Cardinals and this is joint work with Philip Welsh. So let's play a game. So this game has three parameters, theta, alpha and kappa, uh, which we will define as we go. So kappa will be a regular cardinal. So this game is one of the standard set theoretic games. So we have two players, they both have perfect information and they take turns playing some things. Right, okay. So player one starts off by playing a model. So this model is going to be a kappa-sized model of set of C minus. So recall that set of C minus is set of C without power set. And it has to contain kappa plus one as a subset. Furthermore, it has to be an elementary substructure of H theta. So theta is now a second parameter. So theta will be a regular cardinal which is strictly bigger than kappa. So that's player one's move. And then player two responds by playing a measure. So more precisely, play some mu zero, um, such that mu zero is an m normal m zero measure on kappa uh, with a well-founded ultra power. So recall that an m zero normal m zero measure, so first of all, an m zero measure is just a measure as usual, but only measuring the subsets of kappa, which are elements of M0. And M0 normal means that it's normal with respect to kappa sequences in M0. Okay, we require that the models and measures are subset increasing, and at limit rounds we take unions of both the measures and the models. So we continue playing in this way. So this is our last parameter, alpha. So we play for alpha many alpha plus one many rounds. We have our last model, m alpha, and the corresponding last measure, mu alpha. And we say the player two wins if and only if they can continue playing all these rounds. So there's a lot of information here, but the thing to take away is that player one plays a bunch of small models, player two plays a bunch of meshes, the key point is that the last measure player two plays has a well-founded ultra power. And an important thing to remark here is that the models, we don't require those to be transitive. We only require them to contain kappa plus one and be elementary in this H theta. So this leads us to uh, another large cardinal notion. So this was defined by Peter Holy and Philip Slicht in their 2018 paper. So if we take alpha less than or equal to kappa, then we say some cardinal kappa is strategic alpha Ramsey if for every regular cardinal theta greater than kappa, player two has a winning strategy in this game we just described. So no matter which models player one plays, we can always find meshes in this increasing fashion. So just for the purpose of this talk, we also say that Kappa is weakly strategic alpha Ramsey if the same thing holds, but only where the strategy is winning for the first alpha rounds. So remember the game was alpha plus one many rounds, so the only difference here is that we don't require the last measure, mu alpha, to have a well-founded ultra power. Other than that, it's completely the same. And now uh, my sound is coming back. So I'm going to take off. So let's 
start off with the finite versions. And when I say finite versions, I now mean strategic n branches for n being some finite number. Um, first of all, let's recall some well known large cardinals. Uh, kappa is weakly compact, kappa arrows kappa to the 2. And just to recall what that means, um, we, it means that whenever we have a coloring pairs kappa into two colors, we can find a homogeneous set of size kappa, which means that all pairs of this set x, they're all colored the same. So in this case, uh, I guess not working. Oh. There we go. Oh, okay, it's just very faded. So the first kappa is the um, thing that we're covering. The second kappa is the size of a homogeneous structure. And the two is referring to the fact that we're coloring k's, so two elements. OK, I'm going to be a bit uh, unorthodox here and uh, use this notation as well. So this is just saying the homogeneous set belongs to this set. This makes it a bit more convenient. I'm only going to use that notation on this slide. Um, because using that notation, we can just say kappa is ineffable if and only if kappa arrow stationary subsets of kappa to the two. So the only difference is that this homogeneous subset is now not only required to be a size kappa, but we require it to be stationary. Okay, and the last kind of well-known large cardinal I'm going to use here is this notion of complete ineffability, which says that we have a non-empty Upwards closed collection of stationary subsets of kappa such that whenever we pick any stationary set A from this collection, A arrows are to the two. So, what does this mean? So, first of all, uh, we require R to be non empty so we can pick something. It's upwards closed, which means that kappa must be in this R. So in particular, we get the kappa arrows r to the 2. r consists of stationary sets. So in particular, we get ineffability straight away. But now this homogeneous set that we get, which belongs to r, we can now call it h. Now we get that h arrows r to the 2 as well. So now, and then we can continue this process. So we somehow get some kind of iterated ineffability. Kind of an intuition you can use if you want. Okay. So there is a classical paper by Abramson, Harrington, Feinberg, and Schwicker in 77 about flipping properties, um, which gives kind of the well known at this point um, characterizations of, so assuming kappa is a large cardinal, kappa is equal to kappa, so the less than kappa. Um, then strategic omega ramp, strategic zero randomness is equivalent to weak compactness. So this is kind of the, at this point, well-known um, description of weak compactness. Every time we take one of these small models, we can find an abnormal uh, measure on kappa. Okay. Um, so of course they weren't talking about strategic omega ramp, strategic n randomness. They were talking about these flipping things. Um, so this is all just the translation. And they also show, essentially, that when you, we are strategic one branches, so when the two moves, then we are also ineffable. And ineffable, of course, implies we with compact, so we get ineffability somehow lies between one and zero. OK. So now, if you uh, accept this idea of complete ineffability somehow being iterated ineffability, the next result is maybe not a surprise, which is that when we can play the game for omega many stages, we get precisely the complete ineffability, or completely ineffable problems. So remember, weakly strategic omega ranching meant that we could play the game for omega many steps, but we don't necessarily require well-foundedness of the very last, in this case, union measure. So this is, you could say, this is a new um, game characterization of these completely ineffable. So, okay, so far they're, they're good for something. We can use it to give these new descriptions. Okay, um, and the proof uses this classical, the classical proof that I just mentioned before, the base case, 
Um, and when we're going from complete inevitability to producing this winning strategy, uh, one crucial thing that we have to ensure is that these metrics we produce, that they line up. They are all subsets of each other. So that's kind of one detail of the proof. OK, so that's the finite stages. Let's move on to the countable stages. Um, moving on to yet another large cardinal notion. Uh, so this was introduced by Ralph Schindler back in 2000. And in Victoria Goodman and Ralph Schindler's 2016 paper on virtual large cardinals, they formulated this equivalent description um, of a remarkable cardinal being uh, kind as remarkable if and only if for every regular lambda we pick above kappa, there's a new above that lambda such that in a generic extension, we have this picture. So we have an embedding from H nu of V, so the old H nu, uh, with critical point kappa into some model which is closed under uh, lambda sequences. And this model M belongs to V. Okay, and O and kappa is uh, getting sent about this lambda. So you can think of this as being uh, virtually super compactness, is what we call it. Okay, so just to give you an idea of where we are in the large cardinal hierarchy, uh, Ralph in his paper where he introduced them also showed that they're downwards up to the 2Ls. So we're talking about a small problem. And to give you an idea and hopefully convince you, if you're not convinced already, that remarkable cardinals are interesting objects, um, in his paper where he, he introduced them, he showed that the existence of these cardinals is equally consistent with the fact that proper forcing cannot change the theory of Hill-Bahn. He improved this four years later by showing that also semi-proper forcing cannot change the theory of Hill-Bahn. That's also equally consistent with the, the previous two. And very recently, Yang Cheng and Schindler in 2015, they showed this maybe esoteric thing that third order number theory plus Harrington's principle uh, is actually consistent with a remarkable cardinal. So it's not really important exactly what it says, but Harrington's principle is uh, the thing that comes up in Harrington's proof that analytic determinacy implies zero sharp, uh, that it kind of goes via this Harrington's principle. So they were investigating how much of set of C do we need to prove this. Uh, so this showed that third order number theory was not enough because remarkables are downwards absolute to L, but they showed fourth order numbers. So it's that was where this thing was. Okay. So remarkable cardinals are interesting. Um, hopefully. And uh, so about the now we then uh, we've shown that remarkable cardinals, first of all, are strategic or mega ramsey. And also that if we're strategic omega Ramsey, then either kappa remarkable in L or L kappa think that there's a couple class strategic omega Ramsey. So this in particular shows that the two are equally consistent. Um, so this means that strategic omega Ramsey are also equally consistent to all these previous things we saw in the earlier. So the proof of this theorem in both directions goes via this notion of a virtually measurable cardinal. Okay. So we had in the count of, in the uh, the finite case we got weakly compact, we got complete ineffability, we kind of got ineffable cardinals as well. In the countable or the omega case, we get these remarkable up to equi consistency at least. Um, so what happens at the uncountable stages? Um, first of all, uh, every measurable cardinal is strategic kappa Ramsey, where we play for kappa plus one and moves. Uh, so I mentioned I wouldn't have two technical proofs in this talk. Um, I'm going to use this proof though, present this proof, which is in the game, you just play the measure. Don't really do anything. Like this measure measures every subset of kappa, so in particular it will measure every subset of kappa which belongs to any of these small numbers. And it has a world for the world. Everything is fine. Okay, so far so good. Um, so this just shows that measurable cardinals are at least upper bounds for all these strategic uh, kappa ranges, so lambda ranges. 
a theory of Philip Walsh uh, then show us that we also get the other direction up to, up to consistency. And so we have that if we have a strategic omega 1 random kernel, then kappa is measurable in this core model k built below the shaft of a strong kernel, this thing called zero piston. Okay, so I'm going to present a brief proof sketch of, uh, of this proof. So first of all, we um, collapse kappa plus of k to omega 1. So that means that we can fix some omega 1 sequence of the eta alpha, which is cofined in this kappa plus of k. So now, in the generic extension, we can let player 1, in this kind of B game, if you will, play models where we just take k and cut it down to these eta alphas. And we let player 2 follow their winning strategy. So the reason why player two can follow their winning strategy, because all we're assuming is that it's strategic omega one and to B, is that these models here, K belongs to B. Uh, and since we're playing for omega one many moves, we have to ensure that all the uh, partial plays belongs to B as well, but this forcing is omega closed. So they have the same comparable sequences. There is one little detail. I mentioned these models had to be elementary submodels of H theta, so we just take a hole. Then we're kind of satisfy all the rules of the game. We take a hole in B, so we're still in B, um, and all this all this good. Player two follow the winning strategy. Okay, so this produces a measure at the very end, which is then a full K measure since we're co-finding a plus of K. Um, and we can, without loss of generality, also assume that this measure is both countably complete and weakly amenable. Why is that? Countable completeness is because we can ensure that all these models, by just making sure that the alpha model, uh, all the countable sequences in, in that, are subsets or are elements of the next model. So we can ensure that kind of all the, the countable sequences in these models belong to the union of the models as well. And because we're dealing with uncountable cofinality length games, any countable sequence has to be in some model, uh, in some bounded model, if you will, to some bounded stage. Weak amenability can be achieved as well by just putting in the alpha measure in the alpha plus one model, just doing that. So, hand waving a bit, we can assume that this is true by just requiring some more closure to these points. That's the idea. Okay. And we haven't really used that we're working with K or zero pistol or anything like that. So this is where that comes into play. So we're below zero pistol, so we get some inner model theory magic, uh, which Philip calls the beaver argument, which might be the, the correct terminology. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, which implies uh, below this little pistol that whenever we do have a countably complete weak amen weakly amenable k measure, that that k measure is actually on the k sequence, which means that it's an element of k. So kappa is actually measurable in k. Um, so this finishes proof. Okay, so these two results then show that these two things are equivalent. Of course, it shows something more. The proof shows that in this case, the low zero pistol, the two things are equivalent. Like strategic omega one ranges are equivalent to measurables in this moment. So it says something about the core model as well, like how it behaves. So one might ask, uh, is this still true if we go to larger core models? Um, and this is where Ralph has shown uh, that that's true in the core model below wooden column. So here we use close to the same proof, but we use some different magic um, in this new set. Okay. Right. So that was the omega case, well, the finite case, the omega case and the omega one case. So what happens between omega and omega one? Because now we're suddenly jumping from remarkables, which are down in L, and jumping all the way up to measurables. So can we somehow, what, what happens in between? 
recall that kappa is ground to you, kappa arrows, kappa to the less than omega, so we're just coloring finite subsets of kappa in this case. Just some quick facts. Ramsey cardinals can't be in L, and measurable cardinals are Ramsey limits of Ramsey, so just to give an idea of where we belong. Um, okay, and a classical theorem uh, of Mitchell Dodd is that an equivalent characterization of these Ramseys is that every subset of kappa can be put into one of these kappa sized models of 17 minus containing kappa plus 1 such that there is a weakly amenable, countably complete M measure on kappa. So th this is very closely related to the model stuff and measures that we've been doing. So, uh, not too hard conversation shows that strategic omega plus one Ramsey, so just going one step, we are already Ramsey limits of Ramsey. Okay. Um, so, how, how long do I have again? Five minutes. <laughs> right, okay. So, yeah, let's try to do this. Um, so, again, I'm just sketching. Um, yeah, the key thing is that whenever we have a play of this game, here we have omega plus two many moves. So this omega plus one is the last play. So this model here thinks that mu omega plus one is countably complete. It think it's, thinks it's normal, so in particular countably complete. Um, so since mu omega is a subset of that, we can put out lots of generalities assume mu omega is an element of the model, uh, model up here as well. We get that this model really thinks that mu omega is countably complete, and for the same reason as before, also weakly um, But m omega plus one, we're assuming that it's elementary in h theta, so it really is countably complete and weakly eminent. So this just shows the kappa is random. And the remaining part of the argument is not too hard. Again, elementary embedding. Uh, it's elementary substructure of H theta, so the model thinks the kappa is Ramsey as well. Weak amenability implies, or is equivalent to, M omega having the same subsets of kappa as the ultra power. So this just means that the ultra power thinks the kappa is Ramsey. So by Wash's theorem and some elementarity, we get the kappa is a So point being, we exceed Ramsey cardinals when we just go one step further in this. So, last thing I want to mention is what happens when we go past omega one. So, of course, all um, all the uncountable ordinals, they will the strategic alpha Ramseys for those alpha are all equal consistent with measurable by the previous result. Um, but can we somehow approximate measurability? in terms of direct implication. Um, and the answer is yes. Um, can the strategic lambda Ramsey, if and only if there is a less than lambda close forcing, such that in the forcing extension, this is the forcing extension, we have some elementary map from B into B, where B here, because it's less than lambda close, is close to have less than lambda surfaces. Oh, and they have the same subset of characters. So as lambda increases, we get closer and closer to actually being measurable. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And Ralph and I, we've shown in the omega case, which is a bit harder because we don't get well-foundedness for free as we do in the uncountable cases, we've shown one direction. So strategic omega ramses imply we have this generic embedding, but we haven't shown the other direction. It's still open, and it seems like this it's this well-foundedness of the last model in the game seems quite hard. We have shown it in the case where the target model is a subset of B, but otherwise we couldn't find a way to prove it. Okay, so open questions. The first question is what I just said, essentially just phrased slightly more generally. Strategic alpha branches for alpha can't be infinite. Can we say that's equivalent to some kind of generic embedding property? And even more naively, Strategic alpha branches for alpha countable, are they, do they form a strict hierarchy? Like, are they actually consistently, like their consistency strengths are those different? Okay, we end up with a quick overview of what's going on. 
So we started with the weak compactness, strategic omega uh, zero Ramses, got through all the finite levels, got to the weakly of strategic omega Ramses, which was the same thing as completely nettables. We got to the remarkables, don't worry about these iterable uh, cardinals, it's a, a nice way of figuring out where we are in L. They were introduced by Victoria Kipman. It essentially says there's a kappa size model which we can iterate out of many times. Um, and we get to Ramsey cardinals up here above L, then we have the rest of the strategic alpha Ramsey's for alpha countable, then we get to the measurable. And that was fun.